Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. Well, uh, thank you uh, to Scott and all of you. As you, as Scott said, this is my first time in English, so I wanna try. Okay. Uh, well, I am Yolanda. I work at the university. I am an architect, and for me, it's very important to talk about the city and also uh, what is happening in Merida in the last decades. Okay. So I'm gonna start with this image about Merida, and as you know, what is not only Merida is part of Yucatan. As you see in the map, it looks like everything happened in Merida. Okay, it's like a, a centralized city, and the most important things appears to happen here in Merida, and that is what I'm going to talk tonight. What is going on in Merida? Um, the first uh, Google Earth that we can find is in 1984, and we can see the difference between 1984 and what happened in 2023. And I'm going to talk about inside the city, and inside the city is what happened before the peripheral, peripheral highway. Okay, and what happened outside the city in the periphery? It's outside the peripheral highway. Okay, so to explain what's happened in in Merida, I for me it's very important to use a timeline. Okay, in timeline we can put all the events, the important events of the city are in the upper line. Okay, and in the bottom of the line here, there are important events for me to understand and to explain what happened in the city and how do I perceive the changes of the city, okay? Even that we are talking about this century that is in this line, I think it's important to understand what happened a few decades before, okay? Because uh, these events are related to each other, okay? So I put in the first, in 1917, La Ceiba, because we are going to talk about the gated communities, okay? And the first gated community was La Ceiba. Do you know La Ceiba? Okay, La Ceiba is uh, uh, before Country Club. Do you know where is Country Club? Going to Progreso, okay? So the first one was La Ceiba. And next I have a map, and we can see where is La Ceiba, okay? Then the timeline begins in 1978, because this was a big moment for me. I was born in Mexico City, but in 1987 was the moment that my father decided to return to live in Merida because it was, uh, he thought it was a better place to raise their young little daughters, okay? Um, for me, in that moment, it was a big shock because I, I had strong memories for my urban experience in Mexico City, a big city. And um, came in Merida in this moment, in, in the 70s, was quite different, okay? Uh, nothing happens in Merida. Everything took place here in downtown. If you wanted to go to the movies, if you wanted to go to the market, everything, okay? So uh, this is only the, 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 the timeline, and I'm gonna make like a cross section in all the presentation. So this is only to, to put the beginning of the timeline and today, okay? So as I started to talk in 1978, was when I arrived to Merida and everything happens here. Uh, maybe, I don't know how long have you been living here, but I don't know you have the experience of the uh, cinemas in downtown, okay? <laughs> if you want to go to the cinema, in that moment we have to go to, to downtown. Everything happened in downtown, okay? In this map, this is in 1984, okay? As you can see, we was so far away from the, uh, peripher perif peripheral highway, okay? <laughs> peripheral, I ju yes, I, peripheral highway, okay? Um, uh, another special moment was Mexico City earthquake in 1985. And this was important because that was the first moment that people from Mexico City started to came to live here in Merida because before this earthquake, everything was 
centralizes in Mexico City. The big government office have the they took place in Mexico City. Okay, after the earthquake, they noticed that was that was no very functional. That everything happened in Mexico City, and they started to decentralize this big office. And in that moment was we can say the first migration national migration people from Mexico City who started to move to another places in the country and one was Yucatan in Merida okay so uh, the next important moment for me was what happened in the 80s okay uh, at the beginning at the 80s uh, in 1988 was uh, the first big hurricane, Gilberto. Okay, Gilberto was a big hurricane on September 1988, and was a big disaster for for Yucatan. But in that moment, we we do not have internet. We didn't have internet, so uh, being uh, you know without electric electricity or being without water wasn't a big problem because. We didn't have all the communities, all the co the commodities that we already have right now. Okay, so uh, in 1988 was the moment that I started to study at the university. Okay, and still in that moment, everything took place here in downtown. Okay, but in in November, almost like tomorrow but in 1988 this was the first mini mall plaza fiesta the first mini mall was inaugurated it was uh, you know do you know uh, plaza oriente plaza oriente plaza fiesta there were uh, small uh, small malls outside downtown and that was a very important moment for me because in in the in this moment that I was starting the study at the architecture, everything that we needed for work we have to buy here in downtown, and on weekends everything was closed. Okay, so uh, when this Plaza Fiesta was inaugurated, we can buy our supplies on weekends. So it was a, a kind of relief. Okay. Another thing that is important is that the uh, the first Burger King franchise in Mexico was inaugurated here in Merida, and this is important in 1991 because this was before the the free trade agreement with North America in 1994. Okay, so that means like the the a strong business, uh, you know, the strong business. Uh, uh, the uh, you know uh, la 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 fuerza económica, the strong business economic that we have here in Merida, okay. The business mass were were uh, very I don't know they 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 se adelantaron. They going uh, they move move faster than the than the free trade agreement with North America, okay. So the first franchise. Uh, was placed here in Merida. Okay, so it, this happened in 1991. In 1991, also uh, was inaugurated the first mall, Plaza Dorada, in Poniente, in Pensiones. Okay, 1991, and this was an important. This was the first mall, actually the mall, with cinemas. Okay, with the movie theaters. So that was the first moment in the city that the people decided to go another place to the movie and not only in downtown. So we can say that in this moment, at the beginnings of the 90s, the, 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 the city started to change, okay, with a new dynamic outside downtown, okay. And in 1994, Grand Plaza was inaugurated. Okay, and it's exactly the same moment when the free trade agreement with North America, 1994. Okay, but also uh, if you can see between 1991 and 2001, it's a decade between the first Plaza Dorada and then Plaza Las Americas. <coughs> so as we 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 uh, we have to wait 
for 10 years to have another mall, okay? And exactly in 2001, La Gran Plaza, the Gran Plaza, this mall, have the new section, okay? Do you, have you ever been, do you know Gran Plaza? Grand Plaza have two sections. The first one, and in 2001, they built the next, the new one section, okay? And that was the same moment that Plaza Las Americas was inaugurated. So it means that in 2001, we have two principal malls in the city with the cinemas, okay? And the cinemas was the, the new dynamic of the city because the people decided to go downtown or the plazas comerciales, the malls, to go to the cinema, okay? In 2005, something interesting started to happen in the periphery, periphery okay, periphery. So this is La Ceiba, okay? So as you can see, this is the peripheral highway, okay? And this is going to Progreso, okay? And this is La Ceiba. And in 2005, started the construction of the country club, okay? This is the country club, okay? Um, at the beginning of the century, we have another hurricane, Isidoro, and this was a big hurricane, and at that moment, we, the city was uh, more expanded, more sprawly, and we uh, 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 noticed the uh, disaster in the city because also the city was more expanded, okay? So in 2005, we started to see how the city started to, to go into the outside of the periphery, okay? And also something important happened between this moment. I started to study my PhD, okay? And in that moment, I, rem I remember my advisor, and she told me, you need to, to, to find something important to study in your city, something that is changing in your city. In that moment, in 2003, the periphery wasn't important something started to happen, but it wasn't irrelevant to study, it's still in that moment. And in that moment, the, the economic, uh, 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 the economic uh, activities in the city were important, and they were important because of the malls. What happened in the malls, and like the opposite activities in the, what happened uh, taking place here in downtown. So I, I made all this dissertation about what happened in the city between downtown and the outside and how these commercial activities started to become like the new centralities in the city, okay? Also, another important moment was in 2010 and 2012, because in that moment I was designing like the uh, director of uh, urban development, okay? So I was the person who authorized the uh, permission for land use and also construction. So uh, in, in these two years, it was two years, but in two, in two years I understand what what's going on in the city and how the city started to move out, outside the, the, the peripheral rim, okay? So something important happened in 2007, and 2007 new malls appears. Okay, but the important is not only the new malls, but also four new malls in the same year. So uh, it was a very uh, big transformation of the city. We started with Macro Plaza, Alta Brisa, City Center, Galerias Liverpool. And at the beginning, I, I, we only have Plaza Fiesta and Plaza Las Americas, and everything took place in, in downtown. So as you can see, this like a, a driving forces to push that something is going on to the north, and especially uh, to the limits of the city, okay? So this started in 2007, so for me, it was like a big moment in the city that something is changing, okay? 
in 2015, we can say at, at, at the beginning, I said in, in 1917 was the first gated community, okay? But uh, we can put 2015 like a boom of the gated communities, okay? It started to, to, to uh, happen here in the north, especially in this place. Do you know uh, between uh, Temoson? Do you know this this part of the city? Okay, going to La Isla. Okay, Temoson. Okay, and uh, this is very important because this was like a new way of living in Merida, not very common for us. It's like a different style of using the the land. Okay, this kind of gating communities. Okay, so. In 2018, between 2018 and 2020, uh, the city had a big change, okay? And suddenly, as the 2007 with the four, four new malls, in 2018, uh, new malls appears, okay? The harbor, okay, and La Isla. But these malls uh, have um, another another uh, it was another model of malls because these these malls are inside of the gated community okay so we have via montejo via, do you know via montejo via montejo in, in north of merida and they have inside a new mall this is the harbor and also what is going on with the isla the isla belongs to the gated community the cabo norte okay so this is what we started to see at the periphery, okay? This, this new gated community, these new buildings, these new uh, uh, commercial uh, malls, and this is totally new for the city. And the, the things that I think is more important is that it happened very, in a very short time, okay? In a very short time. So this is... Um, Villa Montejo, okay, Villa Montejo, all, this is all the gated community, and also this is the, the uh, mall, the harbor, okay? And we started to see something that not belongs to us, for example, the artificial lakes, uh, artificial, too many things are artificial. Um, yes, and uh, I think it's a different style of life, so different that we are, experiment here in downtown. And the problem for me is not that this, this happened because it's natural that, that the city changed. I think that the big problem is that this happened in a very short time. And we don't have, we do not have the, the time to, to get used to these uh, changes and it's uh, quite different the, the style of life, okay? So if we can see what happened here, this is Cabo Norte, okay? It's about 300 acres. And this is a big problem for our city. And this is a legal problem, okay? Because the law, uh, the law uh, do not precise the amount of the area, the maximum amount, so you can have a uh, gated community of 300 acres or 1,000 acres, okay? There is no limit, okay? And this is, this is one problem for the uh, condominium property, okay? <laughs> the other problem is you can see the, the street, okay? All these gated communities are connected to one single street, okay? And this is another problem of the urban regulation here in Yucatan, because uh, the the legal the legal instrument said that you can build your gated community if you can connect to the previous street to to the existing existing street. Okay, so it means that this is the only street that connect Merida to. Comisaria, comi las comisarias Temozón, the small towns outside the city, okay? So this is the street that, this is street always been there, okay? Since 
always time. And all these gated community are connected to this single street, okay? So this means that there is no planning of the street. The street wasn't planned for this. And this is uh, one of the biggest problems of the periphery of Merida, okay? So we have this uh, uh, Cabo Norte with 300 acres. It's a lot of land in this type of community because they, they only have one exit and one entrance, okay? Entrance, okay? So this is what happened before the pandemic. And when, do you live here in Merida when, the pan when we experiment the pandemic, okay? Well, uh, the pandemic uh, was a big problem for our city because it, we know this, we understand that the this, this city wasn't planning for the urban mobility, okay? The urban mobility is one of the principal uh, activities and the principal fu urban function that the city should have, but uh, with the pandemic uh, was a disaster for the city and also not only for the city, for the people who live outside in the periphery, in the communities outside the city, and they needed to translate from one place to another place, okay? Uh, do you remember that the uh, both stations were uh, moved from every single place in downtown, and the people suffer this problem in in the city. So in in this in this moment in the pandemic, uh, me, I, I and, and other colleagues that study the the city, we know this a lot of problems. Another uh, 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 situation that cannot be predictive, okay. But also in 2020, we have another problem, okay? The, the uh, disasters, the flooding, do you remember that a lot of part of the cities were underwater? And we have like uh, extreme uh, environmental conditions that uh, 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 give you another perspective of the city, where places function and where places where was not exactly uh, working in the good in the good way, okay. And this is a map, okay, that we can see how is the city is growing up, and how is the city is sprawling to the periphery, okay. In in red, we can see what happened until 2010, 2010, okay. This is in the red. We can see how is the city started to going outside outside the peripheral highway. In yellow, we can say what happened until 2013, okay? And we can see this little, it's not little, but a lot, <laughs> yes, this pieces of, of land outside and almost close to the limit of the city, okay? In 2015, the blue color, this is a big quantity of land, very, very in the limit of the of the municipality, okay? And in 2020, the black ones, okay? So the problem is not only how the city is uh, expanding, but also the problem is how, what is the type of the, of the, this urban phenomenon, okay? And we can see here that the, uh, the gated communities between 20 and 2000 and 2010, only 12 gated communities were authorized, okay? So in the first decade, only 12 gated communities. Between two, 2010 and 2015, only in five years, 65 gated communities were authorized, okay? This is, uh, 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 there is no proportion to understand how big is the extension. And in the next five years, between 2015 and 2020, 139 gated communities were authorized, okay? And so this means in a very short time, uh, it's not only 
the way that the CD is sprawled, also the type of the of the these gated communities, and also the short time that these gated communities were authorizing and the amount. Okay, so we can see here in this graphic what does it mean in in area okay so next in 2000 in 10 years only 12 gated communities and these 12 gated communities uh, means five 525 acres okay and in the next five years 65 gated communities 1436 acres okay and in the next five years, with 139 gated communities, we have 2,471 acres, okay? So if we made the, the, all the amount, we have two, 216 community, uh, uh, gated communities and 4,000 acres. Yes? Are you saying that the density is increasing as well? No. This is one of the biggest problem. Yes, yes, this is, okay, this is the, uh, yes. To, but this density is only about the person who living in the gated communities, okay? But one of the biggest problem in Merida is that we have the lowest density, one of the lowest density of the, of the country, okay? Because if you can see in the map, the gated communities are dispersed in the in the land. Okay, there are no no close together. Okay. So in here we can see what happened. We started with an image of the Google Earth, the first image of Google Earth in 1984, and we have in this graphic the first uh, urban development authorizing in 1985. We have this because in 1984, 1995, we have our first law, okay? Our first law of urban development, okay? The first law was in 1985. So that's the moment that we, here in Merida, started to authorize the new developments, housing developments, okay? So we can see that the, the authorizing was uh, irrelevance in that moment to the 80s to the 90s and we can see a change here in 2008 with 10, 10 urban developments okay and that means uh, I, I can well this is in hectares uh, is I, I need to change the difference between hectares and acres okay but we can say in one moment 2008 when this uh, we have 10, 10 new uh, developments. But we can see here in, in 2019, this amount increased with 32 new developments. And this is according to the new gated communities, okay? So uh, what happened here? Uh, what happened in downtown uh, its impacts in the outside of the city. And what happened outside of the city impacts on what happened in downtown. So uh, ev everything is, is connected, okay? If we understand what happened in downtown, we, we, sh we can understand what is the problem of the periphery. And if we understand what is happening in the periphery, we can understand what happened in downtown. S so we can see, so, what happened, Cauquel, uh, Las Americas, Cholul, Temozón, Los Héroes, there are like uh, uh, these uh, forces to expand the city outside of the periphery, okay? But the problem not, not only happened in the periphery, also happened here in downtown. Um, last March, the, the last cinema, that we still have in downtown closes, okay? And that is it's very sad because it means that something changed in downtown and people 
don't don't really think that going to the cinema it's important or they prefer to go to to the malls and it's understanding because the malls offer something different but also means that the the uh, the dynamic in downtown is changing okay so i think that we lose something but we win something else and as you know uh, last friday was la noche blanca okay and this means for us about 20 years of working in downtown uh, about the cultural activities about art galleries about uh, a lot of things that we can explore only in downtown okay so uh, it was it's exactly what i i want to say to you that it's so important to understand what is going on in downtown and what is going on of the periphery. But uh, we understand what happened to the cinemas, the, cl the last cinema closed in, in, in downtown because something else happened outside with the malls and the new experience that the, that the La Isla, uh, the harbor are, are for the people, okay? But Finally, I think that something important is happening here in Merida, and this is exactly what we are doing right now today. No, uh, in 1994, uh, Merida English Library was founded uh, because Elizabeth Duncan. Okay, and I think it's very interesting because if you decide to come here to Merida, if you decide to live here, it's very important for us because you give to us a new meaning of our city, okay? You give to us a new perspective of our city. And also for me as a urban research, uh, give me a new way to appreciate what we already have, to appreciate my city in a different way, okay? So I think that we lose the movies on downtown, but also we win a new different way to understand <coughs> our city and to appreciate what is going on. And if you decided to live here, it's because something is happening in Merida and something we need to, to take care about, okay? So thank you, this is. So I don't know if someone have any question, yes. Yes, I think that we have, I think we have like uh, four decades of difference. I think, yes, uh, uh, yes, maybe, maybe four decades and what happened there in the States and what's going on here. For example, the first mall in Mexico was in Mexico City exactly in the 70s. In the 70s was the first mall. The first mall for us was 20 years after, okay? And I think we have like uh, this, this time of difference between we understand what's going on. And well, actually in, in, in our city, we can see what happened in La Gran Plaza. The, the Gran Plaza is, is empty, almost empty. <laughs> Okay, and in the 90s was our mall, the biggest mall that we have. And it, for me, it's, it's very interesting and also kind of worry how this, uh, uh, how do you say the malls are, are uh, 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 getting empty or changing in USA? Well, also happen here in the city. The older ones, yes, the older ones. And it means that the, the city is changing so fast. 
and the people cannot understand what's going on and this is a new mall and the other problem is not only new mall two new malls two new big malls also the harbor is 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 kind of empty mm -hmm. yes yes uh, how would you place this in the context of what's happening in your transportation plans because i'm not sure that you restrict when you get 30 some odd gated communities in 1990 how are they related to corridors and transportation actually being able to manage these or, or is there any breaks on on this because you know getting around downtown is difficult yes getting around the north is becoming impossible yes yes well one of the biggest problems of the city is that we do not have an urban plan. We do not have a urban plan according to the transportation, according to the mobility, okay? And uh, the problem is that uh, the city is sprawling. All these gated community have, uh, they are very successful because it's um, uh, urban marketing the people wanted to live in this type of, of, of uh, gated community. And it's kind of strange because Merida is one of the security places for living and the people want to live I inside the walls, okay? So it's, it's kind. But the problem is that in specific in this area, the, the streets were not planning for that, okay? And that's that is a legal problem, okay? Yes. Um, I'm just, you know, I'm from Germany. I'm a European, so um, I just returned from the Netherlands, okay. where my uh, daughter works. And I see a lot of progressive cities in, in Europe. You know, they make space for bikes, for pedestrians. They change the whole system. There's a lot of effort. You know, took them, the Dutch people took them probably 20 years to do that, but they do it. Yes. And I just wonder, um, where's the power in Merida for the city plans? You know, who's pulling? Who's pulling that? Who has the, the, the power to change something? Because I don't see that. Is it the money speaking? No. Is it the exactly. money speaking? Then what do you actually do to, to say, hey, this is the master plan. We want to have space for bicycles, for pedestrians. <coughs> We want to make the connections to all those different communities. Where's the power? Well, uh, one of the problems here is the all this land is private. Okay, all all the periphery is is private land. There are no there are no the 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 government has no land. There is no land for for the government. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. They, uh, no. No. Uh, yeah. We have a, a urban plan, yeah. but uh, all the land is private. Okay, that's a problem. Okay. Uh, the city is going to pay a price for it. Yes. You know, because there's a, there's like a natural movement from the city center to the beach. <coughs> you know, just all the cities were like this. If you go to Sydney, San Francisco, they all develop towards the beach. So you have 20 kilometers from the city yes. to the beach. Now, yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I think it's already. <laughs> and, and actually, in this timeline, I, I put some moments that it, it looks like uh, alerts, okay, like the red lights. We have a red lights here, and we have to do something, okay? And uh, actually, I didn't talk about the buildings because the vertical, the, these buildings, uh, uh, started to change the dynamic, and all these gated community are changed the value of the land. Okay, so right now in these in these peripheral peri 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 areas, okay, the value of the land is so high that there are started to build buildings. Okay, and the people of the gated community, I started to to. To, to get angry because they're, they're going to build a tower next to the gated community. And they say, there is no place for you. 
okay? There is no place for anyone. And this is a big problem for Merida because Merida have a very low density, okay? We have a very low density with a big problems of transportation. So this is something that don't... Sorry, I'm wrong, but what do you do? Where do you go? You see all those problems. Do you go to the community center? Do you speak with the mayor? I mean, who's your go-to person? You see all those red flags? Well, uh, uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, actually, I, most of these problems I understand inside because I, I, I was the director of urban development in 2010 and 2012 in a, a very short time. But in that time, I, I understand the, the, the legal problems of the city. Okay? But that was. A decade before, and and uh, I I was very um, impact on how is the change of the city in a very short time. Okay, and I think one of the other problem is not only what happened in Merida because of the people who live in Merida, it's also the way that uh, uh, the government talk about Merida outside. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of people who want to invest and live here, okay? And I think that's okay, but also the the time that everything is happening is too short. And what what you say is very important, but that means I think like a revolution in the urban law, okay? You need a revolution, and also I think that we need a new a new mindset about the city. Because the city is the place that we everything needs to have a quality of life, and this uh, this uh, in this short presentation I only give us like a, a you know a, 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 a single a, a brief a very yes a snapshot of what is going on. There are a lot of problems, okay, in the city, and as this is what I said that we are. Connected. What happened in the periphery is another problem to downtown. Yes. Um, I spoke with someone the other day that's a foreigner, but they're living in one of those gated communities on the outside. And they say the best thing they like about it is it's so quiet because every second house has been abandoned. What's creating created are ghettos. I mean, the, these are places that in 20 years. Yes. Are be yes, absolutely. Well, that's what that's what, what I think. Yes, absolutely, because this is uh, this is uh, 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 it's it's marketing. It's just a business, okay? It's just a business, and if you have this amount of area in gated community, it's a big problem for the city, because if the people they don't want to pay the commodities, the amenities, the uh, all these they have to pay for living there. And they understand that living there is it's a cause to get in and get out. They're going to leave the houses, absolutely. This is a, it's, it's a big problem. It's a, it's a business model. It's a business. You know, since there's so much insecurity in the rest of the country, they're selling business model. Come here, get community in Maryland safe. You know, I live in one of those gated communities. And I'm a friend of those. You know, as a European, we don't have the community. Yes. It's all strange to me. Yes. But my wife in Mexico City, she's like, my gosh, I'm not going to be on the streets. We need <laughs> in a, you know, in a, live in a, in a, in a community. So it wasn't for, for her, not for me. Yes. But uh, it's, it's a business model. Yes, absolutely. Would you say that Merida is now in the midst of a housing bubble? Is because a housing bubble where there are so many new homes and supposedly pent up desires, and much as happening in China right now, eventually the bubble will burst and the market will collapse. Yes. Do you think that's a possibility for Merida? Yes, well, uh, uh, as we know, uh, there are a lot of uh, offers of housing. Okay, there are a lot of housing. Um, no, there it doesn't really need. We did, we didn't, we do not really need too much housing. Mm -hmm. And the people who really need the housing, they don't cannot afford that housing. Okay, so for example, for me, for a Yucatecan living here in Merida, 
there is no way I can buy a house in 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 these gated communities and also these departments over over four million pesos. What about uh, five thousand five uh, uh, twenty thousand twenty thousand dollars? It's, it's it's expensive, okay? And there are a lot of uh, new buildings that are started to to commercialize to commercialize, correct? Okay. And I think just yes, it's kind of bubble. They say that the there is no problem on that, but I think there are a lot of buildings and that that's true. A lot of construction abandoned. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Do you know if there's any plans to build any houses around the city? That's it's a very very good question because. That is the why the people are 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 get um, angry for these big towers that started to build next to their gated community. And the problem is not only the gated community. The problem of of, of the water is is all the city, all the city. Okay, uh, this is small towns, these Las Comisarias, the, the small towns there are uh, around the city, they are suffer, suffering this because they have the new big construction and they don't have water. So that's, that's a big problem. Yes. Yes. That's a very good question. Because there is a big problem for Mexico, I think even for Latin America. There, there, there are no uh, enough money for, for affordable, these, these social houses, okay? So uh, right now, for the people between 30s to 40s, it's going to be very difficult to to buy a house, and also I think the difference that we have here in Latin America, also in Mexico, the difference between, for example, the Europeans, is that for us it is so important to buy a house, to be a, a pro, to to have a property. Okay, in other places they don't need a property; they 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 rent. They rent, okay? It's, it's, it's a different, um, um, uh, yes, thing. And right now, that's the problem because the government do not have the land. They don't have land to 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 build houses for 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 the people who don't have enough money. But also, the problem of that is not only to build the houses is where you're going to build the houses. Because as we can see, uh, the location of this could be, for example, uh, Ciudad Cauquel, Los Héroes, no? It's very, very far away from the city, uh, the problem of transportation. So maybe you can buy a house, but it will be more expensive the, the the mobility to your work to your school to you know so it's kind it's very difficult yes I have one last question what's the mood within the society here towards newcomers to newcomers yeah newcomers you know people like us outside building buying having a good time okay around, you know, is there a mood of yes Welcome, you know, you provide um, you know, work and food, you know. Income, something like that. Or is it a negative mood or is it a positive mood? Okay. Or is it changing, like economic segregation? Yes. Uh, I think there are two, two, uh, two, two, how do you say? Two sides. Dos caras de la moneda, two yeah, sides of the sides. coin. Okay. One is, uh, as I told you when I finished my, my talk, uh, the new dynamic that you give us in downtown, I think, was very, very interesting because 
it seems like downtown was something old that we don't care and we prefer to live outside, okay? So someone else need to come to show you, to show us, okay, this is important, this is history, this is heritage, this is what we're looking for because this is only in the world. There is no only place like you have, okay? So this gives you like, a, you know, like a, like a, a uh, yes, okay? By the other hand, what is going on? Uh, and something that is, uh, you know, the, the land uh, value increase. And the increase is there is no way that someone from Merida can buy a house here in downtown. So when they say it's important to live in downtown, okay, but who want to buy a house? Who want to rebuild a house to do to, to the remodelation? To, it's, it's very expensive, okay? But I think this is the, that we are in between, okay? Thanks to the people who came here to live, we can have a, a downtown who is uh, habitable, how do you say, it's li livable? Livable, livable, okay? Livable, livable. But on the other hand, is we see like a, it's kind of difficult to get access to that because there is no way to pay for that. Okay, but I think also that what say about the these uh, uh, cultural activities. Okay, I think we have almost 30 art galleries here in downtown, and most of them are for for American or for uh, Canadian people, and I think it's very important because uh, they give us another perspective of the city and you know of the cultural activity that we have here. One thing that's positive for the people, I think, that I've noticed is all these air conditioned buses on the roofs now. I mean, people suffered. Anybody who had to take the bus suffered. Yes. Someone recognized that they had to put some priority around the transportation of the people, and that was a good thing. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And and this, the transportation is not, I think it's not only the, the bus, the, the, this condition, it's all the the way that they think the planning of the city. Because even if you have the, 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 this bus transportation, if you don't have the, the routes, if you don't have the street planning, there is no, no solution. Yes. Okay, I think we'll wrap it up there. Thank you very much. Thank you.